Hey guys, what's going on? It is Ash here coming at you today in Clash Royale. I am joined by my man Ruben. Check him out, guys. Top 100 ladder with a level 11 graveyard, level 12 bar barrel. This guy's a beast. You know what, guys? When I have pros on the channel, oftentimes I ask them, who is the best player in the game, in your opinion? By the way, he's inside a match right now here on ladder. We're going to be doing live ladder playing his favorite graveyard deck in the game. But a lot of these pros, they tell me, Ruben, more often than not, a lot of these guys say that Ruben is the player that they look to in terms of the most technically sound player in the game. And one of Ruben's favorite archetypes alongside Bay is Graveyard. So I figured, you know what, guys? Let's treat you guys. See underleveled Graveyard at the very top of ladder live. And hopefully Ruben can pick up, uh, you know, more wins than losses. That's what we try to aim for here on the channel in these live ladder videos. So this is his favorite deck. You guys can see below me in the battle deck. It's kind Kind of it's it's not a, a brand new deck so can't say that but it is in Ruben's opinion with a knight in here in this version it is his favorite deck and in his opinion the strongest graveyard deck in the game right now I have a new meta graveyard deck that I want to share with you guys maybe uh with TNT coming later on this week or or next week I guess it is Friday after all but what I want to do guys is really to share share the best of the best with you guys first and then we'll kind of experiment with new meta decks and look at the deck he's going against by Matt Door. This is an interesting deck. I haven't shared it here on the channel yet, but I mean, I think I'm going to have maybe, I think Hazard will be coming on the channel uh, early next week sharing this Balloon Miner deck because Hazard finished to top 200 with it last season, and this was the deck, the one that we're going against here, that got the most 20 wins inside the world. By the way, guys, if you haven't noticed already, I have a bad head cold right now. I can't really complain because it had been like years since I had a cold at all, so you know, unfortunately, my voice isn't at uh is a little a little suboptimal today so i apologize for that but otherwise i'm still feeling fine i'm still feeling enthusiastic can't wait for the update which should be coming in you know the next few weeks at the very latest so excited about all that stuff so here we go why did i transition from head cold to update i have no idea but here we go into this match here as we enter into double elixir time by the way guys on my community tab last kind of editing note for you guys on my community tab i actually appeared at youtube headquarters giving tips for starting out YouTube channels. I know a lot of my viewers are aspiring content creators, or maybe you already have a channel that's built up. If you want any of my tips, I was there with my best friend, Powerbang. You guys can check that out on my community tab after this video. The whole conversation that we had with Barbara E. Mack uh, will be there. It's a really, really fun time I had there. It was a great honor and privilege to visit uh, YouTube headquarters, get the full tour, and then appear on their YouTube channel. So here we go, guys. It's going to be an Inferno Tower at the river there to counter that baby dragon and basically stopping that graveyard push from happening. But you can see the patience of Ruben here, just cycling that knight in the back, and then he has the Ice Wizard on defense again. Here it comes, a balloon push. Now there's one habit that I really want to point out to you guys, and we haven't seen it yet in this match, but Ruben towards the ends of matches, sometimes he just goes all in. He pushes his chips into the center of the proverbial poker table, and then he just makes an aggressive move. And here he goes right now. He's going all in right here, and he has the poison and the graveyard going down the bats two of those bats still stay alive we don't get a ton of damage there but we get about half of the remaining damage off of that tower maybe a little bit less at 658 on the right hand tower meanwhile that knight did some damage on the left tower here it goes rascals at the bridge for matador but we're going all in here guys this is what i'm talking about here he'll make that aggressive move opposite lane it kind of prevents the opponent from doing what they want to do and he'll just keep he'll just keep piling on here he has the knight at the bridge knight's gonna get uh, not to the tower but there's only 22 HP left. The knight swings. The tower's down. Starting off with a big W from Ruben. You guys can see why this guy's considered to be one of the best players in the world right now. He's uh, he's he's a beast. With level 11 graveyard. I mean, we'll talk more about that in a second. Let's get into the next match, guys. All right, guys, inside the next match. Here we go. My webcam was acting up there. Uh, but yeah, a level 11 graveyard. So graveyard definitely one of those win conditions that you can play under leveled and still have success. I mean, level 11, top, I think, 70 right now in ladder. Yeah, that's pretty amazing, if I do say so myself. And it just goes to show you guys that you guys can, it's a good win condition to use if it's under leveled. Obviously, it's a legendary card, but heck, 
level 11. I mean, most of you guys probably have that on Graveyard. So if Ruben can do it, hey, you know, maybe you can do it. And it's also one of those win conditions that, unlike almost every other win condition in the game, you don't necessarily have to focus on leveling that up first. You can use your gold on the other complementary cards in this deck first, like focus on your knight, focus on, you don't have to worry about the NATO either, right? So look at this deck, right? That's the cool thing about it. NATO, don't have to worry about leveling it up at all. In some weird situations, if your NATO's not leveled up, you can actually activate your King Tower with Skeleton. So sometimes it actually helps, right? Uh, but NATO, you don't have to worry about. Tombstone, you don't have to worry about at all. And then Graveyard, you don't have to, I mean, you do want to level it up, but you don't have to focus on that primarily, right? So it's a nice kind of entry-level graveyard deck, and it's also the strongest, according to Ruben at least, the strongest graveyard deck in the game. So here we go. It's going to be a Lumberjack, a Golem, and uh, some minions in tow, and an Inferno Dragon. So a big push here, considering it is single elixir time. But look at this defensive, kind of triangle defense here. It's uh, <laughs> it's a little channeling, a little bit of Michael Jordan and the Chicago Bulls in the 90s here. Uh, we got the triangle, right, with the knight on one side, and it looks like this knight's going to be able to finish off this minor, but we're going to have to respond to that Inferno Dragon. Dragon, and we do so with the baby dragon in the right lane. Now the opponent's going to have to either let this baby D go or respond. He opts to just let it go. Then he drops the minion horde behind. So let's see. We can counter minion horde with, there it is, just the NATO, which is really nice, right? You pull it to exactly where Ruben did, and you can avoid all damage. That's a three for five trade. Not too bad positive elixir trade. So here we go. 2903 remaining on uh, Ruben's tower and 2343. Now this is another important thing to understand, guys. Ruben. Notice this on all of his gameplay. When he's going against Giant or Golem, either or, or Lava Hound, he'll go same lane graveyard push immediately after the Golem goes down, provided it's A, double elixir time, and it's B, uh, e e the, the elixir is even or at an advantage for us. If we're down an elixir, you're not going to want to do that, obviously. But you can see we scored for a decent amount of damage, and the reason we can do that is we can use that Tombstone, that Ice Whiz, that NATO. It's the traditional splash yard, right? We can use that in and try to pick up those positive elixir trades on the defensive end, just like he did there. Very well done. So now 2060, a little Golemite pinch, 1983. Oh, what if I told you guys I was born before then? I am an old, old Ash. Here we go. It's going to be 13. Now it's a big graveyard push. Now it's going down. Oh, man. Inferno Dragon's not going to do a good job countering that graveyard. Sorry, Matador. That's another victory for Ruben. Let's go ahead and hop in to the next match, guys. Another victory. All right, guys, we had to wait quite a while on that one, going against OG Kings from the Royale. So here we go, Ruben against OG Kings with a Z. Starting out with an Ice Wizard in the back. Now, of course, a Giant deck now, so this could be interesting. When you see Giant, though, nowadays, you have no idea what they're playing. They could be playing the new, the new uh, Giant Minor Witch deck. Could be playing Giant Graveyard, Giant Sparky. There's a lot of Giant decks out there right now, so we're still kind of playing this slow. And Minion Horde's the second card he plays. There's the Minor as well, so it looks like a Giant Triple Spell deck. And then a nice NATO there, pulling everything back. We have the Tombstone to pull that uh, giant to the uh, to the center of the, the arena. And a nice clean defense there by Ruben. Again, not taking any damage in that push. And here it comes. A nice counter push here. And it is the Witch deck, man. I shared this deck on the channel a few days ago. Actually, I shared a little bit of a different version than this one. But the Giant Witch is a thing. It's official now. I'm going to call it almost a week after the balance changes. Giant Witch is definitely inside the meta. And also Giant Skeleton, especially at tournament level standard in Grand Challenges. I've seen a lot of Giant Skeleton, even some Giant Skeleton clone wins. If you guys want me to cover that deck, let me know. I almost don't want to cover it because it's so... It's I, I have a feeling, a sneaking suspicion. I hope I'm wrong. But I think that it might be a really annoying uh, card if it does become super meta giant skeleton, that is, especially in the clone version of that deck. So here we go. Setting up this time, again, in single elixir time, we're not going to go in with the graveyard. Instead, we set up with the tombstone, and now we have a nice defense here. I expect a fireball or something coming in from the opponent. Here it is. Fireball. Miner comes in. We have a knight in as well. We're going to pull everything to the center there with that tornado. Meanwhile, knight doing such a good job, man. Knight is a card that's 
extremely underrated, I feel like, at least. I don't know how you guys feel about the card, but he puts out a lot of damage. He's only three elixir. He just does a good job, a well-rounded card. And we go in again with a graveyard push and the poison and the knight. Now, again, that's an aggressive move, but Ruben did it because he just defended. You know, the win condition was out of hand of the opponent. And, of course, it was double elixir time. So just be cognizant, be aware of that. We go in with a, uh, a bar barrel there, just trying to cycle, get our defense ready. Of course, the opponent could throw another big push at us here. So we're going to set up with the baby dragon in the left as well. Baby dragon, of course, doing a good job keeping that witch, keeping all those skeletons in check. And the opponent comes in opposite lane with a minion horde. We're going to use a ice whiz nato. Look at this defense, guys. Dude, this is just amazing, man. That was actually a very, very tough push to defend, but you wouldn't even know it because Ruben just did so well. And here he goes. Again, his classic signature move here. He's just gonna he had the giant coming at him and the witch on the tower on the left, but he just totally ignored it for a second and he went all in on the right and again. Just like I told you guys, at the end of the match, Ruben is a player who will take those chances, who will go all in at the end. And it worked out again here. It works out more often than not. Let's go ahead and, hey, let's do one more, guys. So far, he's undefeated 3-0. Let's see if he can get four victories in a row here for this video. Be right back with you guys. All right, guys, here we go. Fourth and final match. Let's make it an undefeated video, guys, against T.S. Mr. Enzo. So yeah, man, this, I mean, hopefully, hopefully you guys have, you can see the feel for this deck. Again, it's not a new deck. It, it, we've seen a few versions of it, some with the, uh, the cannon car in there as well. It's a pity. It's a shame that with all the lightning going around, I don't know about you guys, but cannon car, it's still not going to be meta. I, I liked it personally when cannon car was meta, but it's not, and it's just not. I, I wanted it to be, but it's not. So we go in with the graveyard here. Uh, right away and the opponent responds with a minion horde so they could be playing another giant deck it could be that funky lava hound deck with the double minions uh, but you just don't see the the goblin gang with this deck normally it could be like a sparky bait I have no idea anyway we will wait and see about a minute remaining or a minute off the clock excuse me here in the match and it is the lava hound deck so it gives the good game oops I don't think it's GG's yet, but he does have an elixir disadvantage. But again here, he's going to be leaning on these strong defenses in his deck. He has uh, Baby Dragon also in cycle, and he also... So it's a Lava Loon double minions. Yeah, I should have known. Uh, it's, a, it's a tricky deck, but let's see how Ruben handles it. So Fireball comes raining down on the Baby Dragon and the Ice Wizard. Ice Wizard actually stays alive here. Zap comes down, but he... Uh, did he hit the Ice Wizard with a Zap? I think he might have. Anyway, the Balloon will die. He nados everything together in another flawless defense there by Ruben, and he has the damage advantage. So a Baby Dragon flying across the bridge here with about one-third, one-quarter health. Gonna get one hit on that tower, taking it down to 25, 17 HP remaining with about a buck 20 remaining inside this match. Two spectators. We're gonna go ahead and reload with the Knight in the back. We have a Minion Horde aggressively playing place in the left lane along with a miner on the tower we're going to go ahead and use baby dragon and our ice wizard there on defense and let that miner kind of chip away now we have a little bit of a counter push here what are we going to do we're not going to play any graveyard obviously in either lane however we will get that baby dragon getting some chip damage onto that left tower taking it down to 28 96 and we use a nice bar barrel there to distract the minions in the right lane and the goblins in the left lane we set up with another tombstone and one minion chips away a little bit at the tombstone but here we go again guys like i said same lane as the lava hound as soon as they place the Lava Hound, we have a Knight immediately. We have a Poison down. We have a Graveyard down. A lot of Elixir invested, but the opponent had to use a lot of Elixir to defend as well. And again, we're gonna able to get a decent amount of damage off that right tower. But with 30 seconds left, this is going to be a difficult push to stop. Miner comes in on that Ice Wiz. We have the Baby Dragon set up on defense. And we have Nato in hand. There's that Nato. Beautiful, beautiful. And is the balloon going to get to the tower? No, the balloon's not going to get to the tower. Man, he makes it look so easy on defense, right? It's 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 easy to panic in those situations, but dude, this guy's a beast. So here we go again. It's going to be a minion horde and a lava hound in the right lane. This time we're going to use that early poison, taking care of all those minions from the minion horde. Fireball comes raining down on that ice wizard. And again, though, the lava hound does reach the tower, but uh, Miner comes in. We have Baby Dragon set up as well. And we have Nato back in hand. We certainly do. So Baby Dragon's going to clean up very well again here. This match is going to go quite a bit into overtime, I think. Uh, well, here's a good counter push right here. Let's see if we can end it here. He sets a nice, a nice defense there by the opponent, but this is going to be a tough push to stop here, right? We are going to not get the knight to the tower, but the poison comes down. It's going to take care of the entire goblin gang, do about a thousand damage or more to that tower, and take care of the minion horde. That was an incredibly lucrative push there 
for my man Ruben. So here we go again. All he needs is one more graveyard poison, and that this game is pretty much game over because look at all the uh, the graveyard counters in the opponent's hand. They all died of poison. So here we go. It's graveyard poison. This is probably going to be a good game. A defensive minor. That's a desperation play. We do have a balloon coming towards our tower, but check it out. Both of our towers are still over 2,000 HP. Ruben does it again. Undefeated video, guys. Hey, I would like to go longer, but I've had a few half an hour videos in a row in case you missed them. I had a amazing uh sparky e-barbs deck yesterday i also had uh what else we had a uh, a witch deck we had a giant skeleton deck just a lot of great content for you guys that are longer form in the last few days so we're going to keep this one short because you guys you, as you guys can tell i'm a little under the weather so guys i appreciate you i love you i appreciate all the support here on the channel it's three and a half years of clash royale we get an update coming up soon and i'm still enthusiastic i still love more than the game the community so i just want to thank you guys uh, as i do every day so thank you for watching huge shout out to bren chung my youtube partner check out ruben's stats and information thanks to Stats Royale in the description below, along with his social media information. Guys, thanks for watching, and as always, take care, guys.